when you write formulas in Excel, often cell references are what we call relative. For example, if we were to write a simple formula in cell F3 that simply increases all the salaries by a thousand, we would begin in cell F3 and write the formula this way, equal E3 plus 1,000. And if we copy this into adjacent cells, we would expect to see correct answers. I'll just copy across a few cells here. So what have we done in this second example here? E4 plus 1,000. And most of the time, this is what we want Excel to do. But what if we want everybody here to get the same percent of increase? It's going to be 2.9%. And we want to hold out the possibility that this number might change later. In fact, maybe we're exploring some options here. We want to look at the new total, see whether we can afford the new salary increases. So emptying these cells, I'll just highlight them and press delete. We want to write a formula here, and we want to use this 2.9%. Now, based on what we've seen so far, you could imagine if we start our formula by typing equal E3 times, that's the asterisk symbol, this percent. If we were to press enter right now, we would only have the amount of the increase. We need to add this onto the existing salary. So this is one of a number of different ways we could write the formula here. So pressing enter we see a correct answer. What would happen if we copy this into the next few cells? Well, immediately we see only one person's getting the increase. So what's happened here in cell F4? We're picking up the data from cell H3, which is empty. In other words, the reference to the percent of increase keeps changing. And down here, what's happened? Now it's referring to that cell. And a poor solution here would be to fill in cell H3 downward here with that same 2.9%. What we really want to do here in this example is take our initial formula and make the reference to H2 be absolute. In other words, we do not want it to change. We want every one of these formulas to refer to cell H2. Now to see this more clearly, I'm going to zoom in using the slider zoom over in the lower right hand corner. Go back to cell F3 and essentially retype this. Equal, here's the salary, click on it, asterisk H2. Now the way we make this reference absolute is to put dollar signs in front of the H and the 2. Now a fast way to do this is simply press the function key F4. Now, this is not something intuitive. You wouldn't know that the dollar signs are required here. And by the way, it has nothing to do with salary. It's just a coincidence we're using a salary field. But this reference means that when we copy the formula, the reference to H2 does not change. So this calculates the amount of the increase. We'll add on to it the initial salary. And our answer here will be the same as it was before. That's correct. But as we drag this downward from the corner across all the other cells, all the ones in question here, we will see that those are all new salaries. And if we just pick any one of these at random, for example, this one, double click or look in the formula bar, we see it's referring to cell H2. And this is what we call an absolute address. And in this example, it's the only quick and efficient way to create these formulas. We create an absolute reference. Now, there are more sophisticated uses of this where you sometimes have a mix where a portion of this is absolute and a portion isn't. That's the stuff of a more advanced course. But most references and formulas tend to be relative, like the ones we see here and many other formulas. But occasionally, you do need an absolute reference. In this case, it's absolutely indispensable. Gets the job done. And now we have the added advantage here, too. If you're the chief financial officer, maybe you were experimenting with some other numbers out here. We'll simply change this. Maybe it's going to be a 3.1% increase. And as soon as we press enter, of course, all those formulas will increase even more. So using an absolute reference is something critical, and almost every Excel user needs to use this at one point or another.